all about you know, weird messages getting transferred by games and telephones. So let me speak to something that happened over the last couple of weeks. There was, you know, I'm just a pilot. I'm not the travel agency. I'm not really sure how the course assignments and the master board and all that stuff worked out. So let me go on the record and say this is the first time that I'm teaching the English 4 AP in the last couple of years to a batch of 10th graders that didn't have my 10th grade honors class. And I want to make sure everybody knows that I'm not quite sure how the course assignments worked out, but I did like to keep the AP sections because when you registered, you were all given one set of course readings for the summer, one URL, and one syllabus. And I didn't know how everybody was going to prepare for two sets of course readings and two expectations. So I just want to give Mrs. Byrne a huge shout out because she wound up having to be very flexible in her planning. And I know that, I don't know, if I preach to the choir, I've got to be. You guys came out of a very, very robust, energetic, creative, awesome class with her in the 10th grade. That's really what I want to build on with you guys as we go through this year. She and I collaborate very closely. So I just want to say if there was any confusion about that, sorry if you guys got mixed messages. Um, but now that we're back on track with three sections in here, what I really want to focus on today is, first, this class depends on you. Um, most of the time when you come into an AP class, you're challenged with a higher level of rigor, and that can seem pretty intimidating. Raise your hand if you've ever gone to an AP class and thought, uh-oh, I'm already behind on the first day. Okay, it's a familiar feeling. It's also the feeling you're going to have next year when you go to college. Except, this AP class is actually going to be a university course experience. I taught for 10 years at UCLA. I've also taught at other universities and colleges, including locally here at Chapman University. And my approach to teaching is very simple. I want you guys to be so well prepared for life outside the chain link fence that the course becomes more valuable than a grade. If all we have is points, percentages, and tests, then the value of the experience ends when the experience ends. If, on the other hand, you learn the skills that other employers, other colleges, other universities require, and you build value for yourselves online so that when people do a search on you and your work, they come away so totally impressed that they lavish you with scholarships and admissions. This year's students swept the Chamber of Commerce scholarships in the Santa Maria Valley. They nearly swept the two uh, ELF scholarships per month. Like Nobody else from any school won those scholarships. They've accumulated nearly a million dollars in merit-based scholarships. And that's not to say this is because of the course. That's the student's success. Your admissions and your scholarships and your scores on the AP exams, that's to you. I'm just a gardener. I'm just trying to create the conditions where we can thrive together. So what does that mean? Well, this is your course blog. If you haven't already been on it, you should know that it's been up for two months. Right now, the feature set is pretty thin. I have a few member blogs that people have signed up, and Daniel, I need to add yours. If you haven't put that on there yet. Um, as you can see, uh, who is it? Is it Brenna here? All right, Brenna already hacked the course. Normally, I recommend Blogger because I. I assume that most people haven't had that much experience in the media, but Brianna came, or Brenna sorry, came to me and said, how about a different platform? She made her case. As we get into thinking about the year, part of your challenge is going to be, how do I tell my story? And what is my story? And if I'm not, you know, depending on the teacher to tell me everything, how do I make some decisions and what does that say about my critical thinking? Your decision to use Tumblr was based on your experience with it, I'm assuming and your evaluation of that versus this, and a lot goes into that. And we're going to have that conversation when we come back together as a class in the fall. In the meantime, what you need to know is that as the course builds, the blog will build too. If you look at the feature set here, for example, you see a lot more tabs. I'll be adding these in as we go. A lot of this is going to be with you. If you click on the member blogs, and by the way, the URL for this year's course is the same exact one as yours, but with the 12 instead of 13. So if you want to go back and see what we've done and see what students have done, you can. A key element of this is technology. And I don't mean just like online learning. I don't believe in that. There's no substitute for an in-person in conversation. But the fact of the matter is, our culture is here. The internet is not a toy. It's not even a tool. It's the nervous system of the 21st century. When you rode to school today, you didn't get in a car. You got in a computer. When you go home, you're getting into a computer. Everything's programmable. People have pacemakers now that are geared to the internet. Hopefully nobody hacks them. Um, when you create your blog, be aware of the fact that this is now public. Anyone can see it. 
when you go on Google and do some searches about Hamlet or whatever, you'll actually see some of our students' blogs come up first in the search out of the millions and millions of stuff that's out there. If you have any kind of concern about this, please see me privately or just go ahead and use initials. You don't have to use your full name. If you've got a person in your life that concerns you and you don't want everything out there in the public, be mindful. The only other thing you need to know heading into this is that all eyes are on us. Most teachers don't take this kind of a risk. You've seen the content filters for yourself around campus. You've seen the fact that adults are very concerned with what students put online and how they conduct themselves online. Well, what I've found over the last couple of years, and you can look at the number of page views on this blog alone. Right now it's at about 116, 117,000. If I count up, and we're in the process of tallying this year's total, page views, comments, posts, emails, Facebook exchanges, texts, tweets, and on and on, we've got about four or five million discrete communications from the last two years that are proving something really important. They're proving young people don't suck. They're proving that young people are brilliant, that young people are mature, that young people should be trusted, and that young people, given the opportunity, can create some really wonderful stuff for everybody else to consider. Imagine how valuable it would be to have seniors or even college freshmen as advisors as you go through the financial aid and admissions process. Would that be helpful? Well, now you do, because we're going to have an alumni forum, we're going to have alumni Skypes, we already have uh, bloggers in the classroom right now. We've got the Regretti graduating class of 2014, 2013, and 2012. That doesn't happen in high school. I never went back to high school when I graduated. So this becomes not just a working group, but more of a community. And what I'd like to do, because um, I'm going to save some of this. I'm going to embed some of this on your blog because I want you to get started with your resumes over the summer. But there's one element that I'm going to key on next, and then I'm going to throw it open to some of our alumni and current students and ask you for questions. Your big question is so important. I don't know what your big question is, and I want to learn about it. And you may not even have a big question. You may be a person who's just been wondering something your whole life, and this is your opportunity to finally ask it. But every question is interdisciplinary. What I said in this piece is if you show me a cup of tea, I'll show you ceramics, botany, and the history of colonialism. We learn naturally as kids. If you've ever spent time around an infant or a toddler, you know how amazingly fascinating the world can be and how many questions they ask all the time. And in this article, I cite research we go from asking about 100, 150 questions a day as preschoolers to nothing by middle school. You guys have been through the school culture. You know why that happens. We don't need to go into all the horribles about school, but I think we have a meaningful opportunity here to start with what's important to you. Because along the way through the course, if you notice the chapters in that video, it started with expression. Who am I and how do I communicate that to a, a community? Then it gets into collaboration. We do online research flash mobs. We do all sorts of things that involve social media for constructive purposes. I even occasionally gamify the environment, and we see what happens on sort of a semi-mysterious basis. But last year that involved uh, somebody showing up at a standing room only showing up The Hobbit and getting up in front of the theater and reciting to be or not to be, um, and putting the video on their blog. And one of the things I'm going to encourage you this summer is not only to follow this blog, if you haven't already, and if you have a pen and you didn't get this yet, or if you have a phone and you want to put it in, let me make sure you've got the URL now. It's Dr. Preston's RHS Inglet Comp 13.blogspot.com. If anybody needs that banner or bigger. So we'll put it up this way. <coughs> and at the end of this link, I included a, a or this post rather, I included a link to this year's American Lit Big Questions, and you can see how wild hair they are. One of the things that I'm realizing this year is that students are, it's not a question of lack of motivation or anything other than, most students have never really been asked what do you want to learn. And if you have had that experience, brilliance, lightning strikes twice. But for most of us, it's a big leap to think about what motivates me? And all the way through the year, we'll have readings that we'll do in common. We're going to read Hamlet and Macbeth and Dickens and a lot of the stuff that gets you ready for the AP exam. That's a cornerstone of what we do. And let me make sure I say this out loud for the third year in a row. If you're in here, if you're taking this class, my expectation is that you are taking the AP exam. 
I want a 100% participation rate. Pass rate, well, that's to the gods. We do the best we can and we take our best shot. But in terms of participation, if you're not planning on taking the AP exam, you could be in the wrong place. Let's have a conversation about that. If you know for sure you don't need to take it for some reason, I'm not an unreasonable human being, but I just need to understand why. Um, but along the way, even though we're covering our core curriculum, you have a lot of choices. You can create collaborative working groups. Does anybody know who David Karp is? Brenda, do you know who he is? What did he do? Yeah, he created Tumblr. How old was he? He dropped out of high school when he was 14 to build that thing, and this week he sold it to Yahoo for $1.1 billion. There is a group, in fact, let me show this to you briefly. My background besides teaching at UCLA was in organizational development and consulting. And so what I'm showing you right now is an example of, how many people know Michelle Arriaga? She's a senior, okay. She also heads up the Mommy and Me program at Santa Maria High School. And one day she came in and said, you know, they're not letting us use our cell phones. So we looked around and we said, are there Mommy and Me programs to teach young mothers or even older mothers how to teach their children about using electronic media and the internet? And do moms know how to get the best prices on diapers? Do they know how to coordinate childcare? What's the need out there in the community? Well, we discovered there isn't one. She's now created a business. There are lots of things that become possible out of this course and this experience. And all of this right now is washing over you like a wave. This is like the first day I worked at Baskin Robbins when I was 15 years old. The manager told me all about how to do everything, and I smiled and nodded, didn't want to look like I didn't know what he was saying. Then the customers walked in, and I went, now what? So as we get more familiar with this, you're going to have some of this sink in. I'm not worried if it doesn't all happen at once. In fact, as these guys will tell you, some elements of this course don't make exact sense while you're in it, but a year or two after when you go to college. That's why I say don't trust me. Talk to the experts. Talk to your peers about this. Um, let me break for a moment and ask, because I've rambled a bit because I'm conscious of the time, does anybody have any questions or comments so far for me, either on just logistics, registration, basics that you need to do for the summer? You need to put up a blog. Collaboration is not a crime. Your whole life you've been told that looking on somebody else's paper is cheating. Well, to get stuff done, like how do I create a blog? Of course it's not cheating. The first thing that companies tell you is you're a poor team worker. Well, of course, you haven't had any practice. If you don't know how to do a blog, talk to someone who does can't find someone who does or you don't know someone in the course, my email is on the board right underneath my name. It's dpreston.learning at gmail.com. You can email me 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I may or may not reply in the 24th hour, but I'll reply as fast as I can. Um, also over the summer, you need to think about your big question. And if you have the opportunity and you're motivated, and I hope you are because college is expensive, it's time to start thinking about admissions and scholarships because we only have a few minutes left, and I am conscious and I'm talking super fast today. Current and former students, Rylan, Ryan, Cody, anybody have any feedback that I've left out that you guys think these guys need to know? Take advantage of it, you guys. I mean, Cody and I, we, grad, we were the first class that actually participated in Preston's curriculum that he's teaching you guys now, and at the same time we sat here and we are just like, wow, this sounds so cool so much with this and as the year went on you know we got lazy we were seniors we were like oh yeah we'll just push this to the wayside but I mean honestly I can't stress enough how much you guys need to take advantage of this I mean Cody myself and Nick Lichen made that video that you guys watched at the beginning and when I show that to I'm a, I'm a film major at Allen Hancock College and when I show that to future studio industry or production major and they say oh well, what do you have what have you been doing like since you started this I can show them that and they can see all the stuff that I've been doing just from that I got to use in this class. On myself, I probably wouldn't be able to do that because I didn't have the tools or the resources or the subject matter for that fact to even start something like that. So, I mean, I, that's all I got is just take advantage of every opportunity you have. And the stuff you learn here applies to college. Like, just the other day in our English 103 class, Ryan recited to Dick Hamlet soliloquy and because the teacher asked him to. And he just knew that. And then it was, we were just, and we also just had a final exam, and it was on Hamlet. And we just knew everything. We just busted up the final. So you need to take advantage of what he's doing. The other thing is, Ryan made a really important point. He gets to say not only, and so does Cody on that video, that they built something extraordinary. 
and told a story, but they also collaborated with one of the top sound engineers in Hollywood, who in this case happens to be my brother-in-law. But because I have lived a life outside of high school, I know people who know people, and I'm always happy to introduce students. Because one of the big challenges we have in our education system is you don't get to meet the professionals until you're well down the road towards figuring out what you want to do for a living. And I like to introduce as many people as I can. So for example, a couple of weekends ago when I was sitting between the guy that invented the spreadsheet, the guy that invented Siri for iPhone, and a guy that invented a set of headphones that records the sound <coughs> inside your head, so that when I played them back I actually heard my voice the way I heard it for the first time. I, I literally listened to them over 20 minutes. The guy who invented the spreadsheet had a problem with his, with his hearing aid. And the other two guys on napkins figured out in 20 minutes how your smartphone, hardware, software, and artificial intelligence can be a better hearing aid than your hearing aid. That, to me, is the sexiest thing on earth. <laughs> I love learning. I'm an addict. So all the people in my sphere are now your family. Last year, for example, when I had Ken Heller on, he's the dean of students at UCLA, and, and Ryland and a few other students have been accepted to UCLA, Ken's having them to his house for dinner. That's the way I operate. And so unlike you know, years past, and this is the MacArthur Foundation. If you don't know what the MacArthur Foundation is, they host something at University of California at Irvine called the Digital Media Learning Hub. I didn't make up the title. You have Becca Castillo to thank for that because I crowdsourced the title. But what we're doing is still so new to so many people that we get a lot of questions and we get a lot of attention. We've been featured in a TED Talk as far away as Africa. And so I don't say these things to put pressure. I say these things to get you curious and to start having you imagine what could be possible for you. Because if it's just another syllabus, just another play to read, and just another quiz to take. That's not the way I want to spend the year. But for everybody who's got an idea in your head, and you've all had those moments when you've just said to a teacher, or even in your own mind, can't we, and the answer was no, this year the answer is yes. And my main job is to work as your consultant, whether that's on admissions, scholarships, getting you ready for the AP exam, or if it's pursuing a career, or an entrepreneurial venture, or a creative endeavor, that's what we're here for. So, last shot, because I know we're at 12.49. Does anybody have any questions, comments, jokes, anecdotes, riddles, sarcastic remarks? Yes? Um, so I'm in the class this year. Really take advantage of each other, guys. Like, there's forces that everyone has by themselves. And I know especially preparing for the AP exam, the people who sat in, like, the little table we used to collaborate with, um, some people are better at multiple choice, some people are better at essays, and we just got together and, you know, worked on helping each other. And you guys are like your best friend for the year. <laughs> like everyone in the class is motivated. We had a Facebook page. We were posting on there all the time, talking to each other. So work with each other. And here's the one thing I didn't talk about. So you need to have a blog for the course. Some of you may have that experience, some of you may not. Come in at lunch any day. Come in zero through four any day. That's when I teach. Ryland's available. I know that he's made himself available via phone and email, and we've got a bunch of seniors who are happy to help. If you're in Ms. Dolan's class, she's told me that she's also going to reserve some time for you to work on that. We happen to have 0, 3, and 4 in common, so I'm, I'll send mentors over if you need help. But whether it's email, Dulce talking about your peers, or relying on the seniors or alumni, you have a support system. Don't procrastinate and don't be shy. Because here's the quid pro quo. All of these exciting, insane opportunities make you very public and very visible. So if anybody's used to sitting in the back of a class and not wanting to be noticed, this ain't it. Not only can you not be invisible in here, but you're not invisible out there either. And so when we go through the members' blogs, if I just flip over, and this is the last thing, and then I'll let you get out of here. If you look at the member blogs from last year, you can literally scroll to every single person in the class and see exactly what they posted, when they posted it, how well they did, and what they're all about. Because now you get to see their aesthetic choices, their personal flavor on things, and the last thing I'll remind you of is because we don't have a use policy, don't be a douchebag. That's my use policy. Be the person that you'd want to admire if you met you at a distance online. Be the you that you want to be proud of. I don't say anything more than that because you're already wonderful or you wouldn't be here. But I do want to remind you that none of this is private. All of it's quotable. Every single email I send to every single student could conceivably wind up on the front page of the newspaper. Same with what you do here. Now that can be a wonderful thing, because now you've got value in the community. Better than a resume or a diploma, they can actually see your working life, your learning life. Don't screw it up. Have a nice day, everybody. Thank you for coming, and feel